Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, a special edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm the Reverend Canon Andrew Gross, and today is June the 4th, 2018. Okay, I would like to introduce, if not, you guys haven't seen it, actually the last time you and I spoke on camera was probably Latrobe, Pennsylvania, but this is the Canon Reverend Andrew Gross, and you are the communications officer, kind of press for certainly ACNA, and uh, you often hold the press hat for GAFCON as well. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks Kevin. Yeah, I'm the communications director for the Anglican Church of North America, and then for GAFCON service, the press officer. That's right. Sure. We're going to talk about GAFCON. Many years ago, at the beginning of the Anglican TV ministry, we showed up in a place called Jerusalem, and we filmed GAFCON 1, and uh, it was a hit. Uh, and it was kind of a, a, a self-change within the church where a group of people said, we're on the wrong course, we need to stop, repent, and get back on the right course. And that was a movement within the church that seems to have not just happen at one single space and time, but it's a growing movement within the church, a uh, reformation, if you will. And there's a GAFCON 3 coming up in Jerusalem, and I thought we could sit down and talk about it with you because you're the GAFCON press officer, and you don't do anything off the record, right? No, no, nothing at all, Kevin. <laughs> so let, let's start out with the people who don't know and have not been part of this movement for 10 years. What is GAFCON? That's a good question. So GAFCON started in 2008, as you said, in Jerusalem. So this will be the 10-year anniversary of the conference going back there. Uh, it's a renewal movement within the Anglican Communion to restore the Bible back to the heart of the Communion. And so this renewal movement has a conference every five years, first one in Jerusalem, then we were in Nairobi in 2013, and now we're back in Jerusalem now in 2018. So it's a renewal movement, it's a conference, but in addition to that, it also, when it meets, meets with authority. Um, it does more than what your typical uh, church or Bible conference might do. So, for instance, in 2008, it called into being the Anglican Church North America. Uh, just recently, the GAFCON primates uh, set up a new province in Brazil. Uh, so the GAFCON movement has a conference, but it also uh, forms new provinces and, and um, uh, works to uh, bring orthodoxy uh, back to the community. Now, we talked a little bit about that. You also have this uh, statement called the Jerusalem Statement, which is yeah. kind of the guiding principle going forward. Tell me a little bit about that. Yep. So in 2008, the uh, conference attendees formed the Jerusalem Declaration and the Jerusalem Statement. And um, part of what that does is hold the movement together. It's a, a confessional document. And uh, it's important to know that a conference like this uh, the attendees have an important role to play. We don't go into the meeting ahead of time um, with a statement already crafted. The statement's put together by all the different constituents that are part of the conference. So it really is something um, that everyone has a part in. I remember three years after the, the first uh, Jerusalem conference, I got a call from one of my favorite English friends saying, Kevin, you got to fly out to London. We're launching the FCA. Yeah. Whoa, what, what's that? The Fellowship of Confessing Anglicans were going to rebrand GAFCON. And I said, okay, cool. So I flew out and filmed it. And it seemed like a one and done thing because GAFCON is such a movement within the church, you can't rebrand it. Yeah, that's right. It was FCA was uh, Fellowship of Confessing Anglicans. And it went by both names in the early days, mm -hmm. FCA and GAFCON. Uh, and the fact of the matter is GAFCON is the name that stuck. So any attempt to make it uh, Fellowship of Confessing Anglicans, kind of hearkening back to the Confessing Church in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, was attempted, but um, uh, in the end of the day, everyone uh, knew it and knows it as GAFCON. I'm a member of the Christian press, and oftentimes when I'm in a press room in England, I'm sitting there with BBC reporters and, and like, and, and whatnots, and they have a completely skewed idea about what GAFCON is. And I don't know if, you, yeah, I'm sure you do, you were the press. Uh, Peter Jensen did an interview with the BBC and uh, the interview was all about GAFCON, the movement, kind of the discussion we're having here. He probably said something about sex for three and a half seconds. And the BBC just put that out as their main story. GAFCON is about sex. Is it about sex? Is that the only thing you guys are about? 
No. Uh, I can give you some background on that story. That was from the 2015 GAFCON Primates meeting that happened in England. And actually, they didn't talk about sex at all during that meeting. So I had worked with the uh, reporter from the BBC and said, listen, here's the list of things that we talked about this week. Uh, sex wasn't one of them, but you know, here's you know, 20 minutes with uh, Archbishop Jensen for an interview. And so he kind of went through the different pieces of the, of the breadth of what we talked about, but then slipped that question in about sex in there. And Archbishop Jensen gave a great answer. I mean, sure. he's a great interview. It was, it was pithy. It was short. It was to the point. Um, maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds, something like that. Uh, but they cut mm, five seconds out of that and uh, then ran a headline uh, that was misconstrued, GAFCON's position on sexuality. And that's what ran on the uh, World Service uh, that day. So uh, that happens a lot. So part of what we have uh, a challenge, I think, for your audience is to kind of know what GAFCON's really about. Because you've got, on the one hand, a secular media that doesn't always get religion. And their editors really aren't, just care about the sex angle. And then you also have some of GAFCON's detractors that uh, are more than happy to kind of continue pushing that narrative, that GAFCON's just a one-issue group, and the UK activist groups are called ginger groups. So GAFCON's just a ginger group. Well, uh, yeah, the fact of the matter is the GAFCON movement represents the majority of the world's Anglicans uh, uh, by province, by archbishop, by bishop. Uh, and when we get together, we really talk about the breadth of Christian concerns in the 21st century. So one of the things that I did, I took all the communiques, uh, primates communiques, Nairobi, Jerusalem, and we put them into a word cloud. Oh, sure. And in that word cloud said, okay, you know, what do we talk about the most? And, uh, you know, what is GAFCON really about when you look at our documents and what the, the delegates themselves, the primates themselves have said? And part of what you see when you do that is that, you know, the main words that come out are, Gospel, Christ, churches, provinces together, faithful, prayer. I mean, the sort of things that you would expect a Christian movement uh, to be about is what the GAFCON movement's about. There's really a breadth of concerns and cares for the world that GAFCON has. And so I think for those that think that GAFCON's just about sex and politics, um, uh, you've probably been listening to the secular media too much. Uh, agreed. Um they all care about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and that has not changed since the 60s. All right, there's two type of people in my audience. There's the type of people here that are going to go to GAFCON and the people who are going to stay home. Let's talk about the people who are going to go. What can they expect? Yeah, so the conference is going to start on Monday morning, and it's going to go through Friday about midday. And the schedule in the mornings is going to be uh, very similar each day. So it's going to start with worship, with prayer. Uh, the worship is going to be led by a joint team from North America in Nigeria with a, a strong Nigerian choir. Um, so we're going to go uh, worship, prayer, Bible study, and then some time to reflect in small groups in the Bible study. And then from there, there's going to be the first uh, plenary session. And the plenary sessions um, are moving through the theme each day. So we go from, let me find a uh, uh, fine schedule I've got here. Uh, Monday, Archbishop Oko is going to be talking about God's gospel. The next day, Bishop Michael Nazar Ali is going to be speaking on God's church. Archbishop Mbanda on Wednesday is going to be speaking on God's world. And then Canon David Short from Canada is going to be speaking on God's strategy on Thursday. And then Friday is going to be the uh, conference communique. David Short, he was the Bible study leader for the first GAFCON. Um, That's right. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, resources. Now, uh, this is going to be the first time Anglican TV is not there to film and broadcast because we've been hoping for the longest time that we could pass that banner on to uh, groups like yourself so we don't have to hop in a plane, sit in a plane, fly in a plane, and go to all these places and set up a camera and a tripod and try to see if we get a, a live stream out of uh, Kenya or a live stream out of Jerusalem. You guys have taken that whole mantle on. You're going to live stream this yourselves. Where do people go to watch the live stream and get updates on the conference? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, one can go to the gafcon.org website. It's going to be, there's going to be a link on the front page to watch the live stream there. Uh, Gafcon's YouTube channel, uh, Vimeo, as well as on uh, Facebook and Twitter. So on, on Facebook, that's Gafconference uh, Twitter. Uh, you can follow at the hashtag Gafcon2018. Uh, or the handle is GAF Conference on Twitter as well. So there's going to be lots of ways uh, to follow. 
Uh, we're feeling pretty good right now about the Wi-Fi. That's the that's the one weak link in all live stream broadcasts. What? But we we think we're there. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any experience of that at all, do we, Kevin? Oh, geez. <laughs> so. If for some reason the live stream doesn't work, we'll make sure we get video up right away. But uh, we're thinking, we're, we're told, we're told by uh, the Israeli uh, planners there that uh, the Wi-Fi will be strong enough. So uh, so all that to say, I mean, we're planning on doing eight hours of live streaming a day. So there'll be plenty to tune into. Um, and then that live stream will then replay over the course uh, of the next 24 hours. So okay. one can, uh, if you wake up in the United States and you want to watch the whole live stream, uh, rather than having to wake up at uh, 2 in the morning, you can at 9 o'clock. Uh, pour yourself some coffee and pick up from there. So. Well, it's not just a live stream of the event. You're going to do uh, on-spot interviews. You're going to have people yep. uh, who accidentally walk by the microphone. You're going to stop and say, hey, what do you think yes. of GAFCON? That's right. Yep. So the plenary sessions will be there for live stream. And we go to the breakouts, or sorry, the breaks, whether it be lunch or tea. Uh, there'll be a, a lot of interviews that happen, one-on-one -on -one interviews there, kind of backstage stuff. Now, the first thing Lambeth is going to do is going to downplay GAFCON. And in downplaying GAFCON, they're going to say that you probably represent 6,000 people. Not all the world is big on this new re uh, Reformation movement because, you know, the Church of England is doing just fine, thank you. The Anglican Communion is doing fine. Look how well we helped... Uh, uh, presiding Bishop Curry come out of his fog in, in the Episcopal Church. That's not true. You actually are a large organization uh, representing millions and millions of Anglicans. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we've got uh, statistics from the Global Center for Christianity out of Gordon-Conwell. It puts the numbers of the Anglican communion somewhere around 90 million. Mm -hmm. uh, of those 90, uh, we expect 50 million of those to be represented at GAFCON through their primates and through their bishops. Um, that 90 million figure is uh, a little soft in that the Church of England, I think, in there claims uh, 25 million. Um, uh, I think we know that on Easter and Christmas they really have more like 2 million people perhaps there in services. So let, let's say 5 million. That brings the numbers of communion, you know, down closer to like 70, of which 50 million will be uh, represented at GAFCON. So it's uh, uh, a sizable portion of the Anglican communion. That's great. All right, Andrew. Now, I want to do a follow-up after GAFCON probably for you two or three weeks after GAFCON when you get some rest. And we'll talk about uh, what GAFCON 3 uh, calls for because GAFCON 1 obviously started the province here in America. GAFCON 2 called for one in Britain. Before 3 started, you already started something down in South America. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in GAFCON 3. Although you probably know we're not going to tell anybody, so they'll actually watch. Well, I know, I know, I know some things that I can certainly share. I mean, okay. part of it's up to the conference delegates. So the conference delegates will uh, will surprise both of us, perhaps. Um, but part of what's happening in Jerusalem this time around, it, it kind of shows the maturity of the movement, and that we're getting ready to launch uh, nine new networks. And these networks uh, will be lay people uh, and clergy from around the community that are uh, focused on uh, bringing the mission of the church forward in very specific ways. So, for instance, there's going to be a church planting network that's getting started in Jerusalem, uh, Global Mission Partnerships Network, uh, Intercessors Fellowship. Uh, there's going to be a lawyer's task force. Bishop's Training Institute's been going on, but the folks that have been a part of that are going to be networked more together. Mm -hmm. uh, the other ones are theological education, uh, sustainable development, uh, the Mother's Union uh, folks who are part of the GAFCON movement, and then youth and children's ministry. So these nine networks kind of show, I think, the way in which the GAFCON movement is is spreading, and it gives it a stable platform for the future. Cool. And I'm all excited. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited about it. We're going to have, in addition to the plenary sessions, we've got 24, I think, seminars that are happening on cultural engagement and evangelism. Um, this is just going to be... Yeah, lots of great stuff going on. Good. All right. Uh, I'm going to provide links in the show notes to uh, get all the information for resources and stuff. And uh, watch the uh, GAFCON feed, not the Anglican TV feed, as I'm just going to sit down and relax and actually attend these on my own. So it's, it's a new day. Andrew, I want to thank you for your time. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Andrew Gross. And you've been watching episode 401 of Anglican Unscripted.